In Matthew 20, we see the laborers in the vineyard. We see the Son of Man sent to be a ransom for many. And uh, men being received just before the triumphal entry. Let's pray. Lord, you are the one who came not to be served, but to serve, to show your character. And you made yourself uh, killable for our sake. And uh, you offer us all the same thing. But it's so much greater than a day's wage. And we thank you that you were the one who worked it. In your name, amen. For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, You go into the vineyard, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went going out again about the sixth hour, and the ninth hour, and he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when the evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what, I, what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. And as Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside, and on the way he said to them, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and deliver him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came up to him with her sons, and kneeling before him, she asked him something. And he said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Say that these two sons of mine are to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your kingdom? Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? They said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. And when the ten heard it, they were indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. And as they went out of Jericho, a great crowd followed him. And behold, there were two blind men sitting on the roadside. And when they heard that Jesus was passing by, they cried out, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. And the crowd rebuked them, telling them to be silent. But they cried out all the more, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. And stopping, Jesus called them and said, What do you want to do? What do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Lord, let our eyes be opened. And Jesus, in pity, touched their eyes, and immediately they recovered their sight and followed him. This chapter ends with Jesus showing pity, that he has pity on people. And he has pity on two people right before 
he heads into Jerusalem for Passover week, for the festival, where he's going to die in a week, where he just said here that I'm about to go be killed in Jerusalem. I'm going to be raised on the third day, telling everybody this. And so this is the last time that he's speaking to people outside of Jerusalem in this traveling ministry of his. And this is a picture of the last will be first and the first will be last. And the crowd didn't get it. The crowd at the bottom of the page here said, be quiet, quit yelling at him. We're about to walk in. We're about to have a triumphal entry. And it's the last hour here. And Jesus says, now this is what I was just telling you about when it comes to the laborers in the 11th hour, the last second, the buzzer beaters. Uh, And the challenge here is not necessarily that a, a denarius isn't worth very much, but rather how much people think their work is worth. And I, there's a lot of people that view this in the kingdom of God that see their work as adding to Jesus's. But really what it comes down to, I choose to give this last worker. Am I not allowed to choose what to do with what belongs to me? God gets to choose. This is the fact. And he gets to do what he pleases And then it's this word here, belongs to me. Uh, What belongs to Jesus is that which he ransoms, gives his life over. Ransom means that's mine, and I'm going to purchase it back because it's been taken from me. It's not a wide-open, universal, I'm going to collect everything, and then I'm going to lose some. No, no, no. I'm ransoming. Uh, That's been ransomed, and death is what I have to pay for it. And so it's not a denarius that we're getting. It's the blessing to serve, the blessing to be in the kingdom. We're being paid by being in the kingdom. The denarius is what's on top. But we're not being left to stand alone. We're not being left outside the city, crying to the son of David and wishing that we would be redeemed. No, Jesus has had pity on us, and he's having pity on others, and he has chosen to use you. Don't begrudge who he chooses.